What's up, everybody? Welcome to the gym. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome to the gym. It is good to be with you this morning. I'm Pastor Jeff, and it's workout time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're coming to you live right from the place where we work out. You know why? Because God is calling his church in this season to work out like never before. Come on. Because he's calling his church to get in shape like we've never been before. Because there's something amazing that God is going to do in our midst. And he wants to use a healthy church. He wants to use a church that's fit, that can run, that can keep going when storms are, are taking place. But I am excited that there's going to be somebody that's going to have their life changed. And God is going to do it at the gym. Somebody say amen. Amen. Listen, we want to welcome you to Freedom Movement Church. God is good. God is moving. I need everybody to share this broadcast right where you are. You won't want to miss this. I believe there's going to be a word for you, and it's going to change your life because God is moving in this season like never before, and there's a move of God with your name on it. And on behalf of myself, Pastor Jeff, and my wife, Teresa, and the whole Freedom Movement family, we're so glad that you're here. I hope you got your sweatpants on. Yes. I hope you have your gym shoes on. Mm -hmm. I hope you got your workout gear on. I hope you got your water on the side. Because it's time for us to work out. Somebody give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I want us to go right to the word of God. I believe there's a word right for us. And we're going to jump right in. Hallelujah. We're beginning our new series. The series is called Workout series is simply called workout. This is the time that God has given us, getting us not only physically in shape, but spiritually in shape to be who God has called us to be. So excited. Hallelujah. Open up your Bibles with me. Hallelujah to the gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter six. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter six. And for your hearing, we're going to read verses nine through 15. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. When you have it, say amen. I invite you on your own time, read Matthew chapter 5 through Matthew chapter 7 so you can get the fullness of this teaching of Jesus. It is amazing. But for today, we're going to be at Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15. I'll be reading from the ESV, English Standard Version. Read as follows. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, mm -hmm. hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Yeah, yeah. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. People of God say amen. 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 I want to talk for the next few minutes from the subject, the anatomy of a prayer warrior. Mm. That's good, that's good. The anatomy of a prayer warrior. Mm. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power, God. Lord, we need a word from you yes, like God. never before. Yes, so, Lord, we believe you by faith to have your way in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would even use me, fresh anointing, let it fall fresh on me. Let your word uh, uh, go forward with boldness and with clarity. You would accomplish the very thing that you have set out for it to do before the foundation of the world. Lord, thank you for your plans for a healthy church. Thank you, Lord, for your plans for a powerful church. Thank you for your plans for a whole church. And we believe you, Lord, that you would move in the hearts and the minds of your people, that you would be glorified like never before in this season, in the name of Jesus. So we ask that you would give us eyes to see you, 
ears to hear you, and hearts to receive like never before. We thank you in advance that every hindrance is rebuked, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, anything that keeps us from hearing and receiving you, Lord God, that you would move it out the way, that we would receive this and run with this word and never be the same again. We thank you again that the devil is already defeated. Yes. He has no power in our homes, and our jobs, wherever we are. And we thank you for the victory that we have in you. So, Spirit of the living God, we believe you by faith to have your way. Yes. And we ask that you speak, Lord. Mm -hmm. Your servants are listening. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name, yes, people of God, shout it, amen. 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 Hallelujah. The anatomy of a prayer warrior. Hey, I'm blessed today to be at the gym. Yeah. Ah, it's a great feeling to be at the gym. But this ain't just any old gym. Mm -hmm. This is what you call a home gym. The thing that happens with a home gym, if lifetime fitness is closed, it's all right because you can still work out at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I like the home gym because if you got a membership at Planet Fitness and for some reason they are closed, it's all right because you can still work out at home. Mm -hmm. And even if you were in the midst of a pandemic, and you had a membership to Freedom Movement Church. Mm. And the church was closed. That's all right. You can still work out at home because you got a home gym. Mm. God in this season is calling his people to have a home gym. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. You got to have a place where when you can't get to your prayer partners, you still know how to work out. You got to have a place if you can't do praise and worship in person, you still have a place where you can go ahead and get your praise on and you can work out. Mm -hmm. Is anybody blessed to have a home gym? Yes. Oh, somebody say amen. Amen. So we are in the home gym. And if you look closely, there are some very necessary ingredients to your home gym. Mm -hmm. So you see some things over there, some, some bikes that you can ride. Because the more you do that, it has a way of increasing your stamina. So now you can be able to run a little bit longer and get a little bit in more shape than you were. And you have weights that you can lift here. But one of the most crucial elements of the gym is the weights. The weights is one of the most crucial elements of the gym. Every gym has to have weights. You know why? Here's what you got to understand with the weights. Stay with me. You got to be careful with weights. Mm -hmm. Because if you have weights, sometimes you can hold it in a certain kind of way. That if you keep holding it, your arm will begin to give out. And it will be getting numb. Because you're holding it in a certain way. And even though this is the same weight, but if you hold it too long, it'll get heavier. Mm. Are you seeing this? But in your gym, weights are not for you to hold. Weights are for you to lift. Mm. That's so good. Because there's something that happens when you begin to lift weights. Because when you lift the weight, all of a sudden, your arms get to be a little bit stronger and you'll over time have more strength than you used to have. How many know there is a reason that God doesn't remove weight out of your life? Ooh, hallelujah. See, there is a reason why sometimes he allows some weights to stay in your life. And many of us are panicking and stressed out because we have weight. And we have a tendency to hold it the wrong way. And we have a tendency to look at it and stare at it. And we're wondering why it seems like it's getting heavier. And it seems like things aren't moving the way they're supposed to. And God says, I've allowed the weight in your life, not for you to hold it, but for you to lift it. Because when you begin to lift the weights, this means that you are believing God to have his strength made perfect in your weakness. When you begin to lift weights, you understand that he can step in when you're weak. You are strong because he is always strong. When you begin to lift weights, 
you realize that your arms get a little bit bigger. Your capacity gets a little bit greater. And now you can handle today more than what you could handle yesterday because you have some weight in your life that you are able to lift. You should stop complaining about some of the issues in your life because God has a better plan for your life because he's allowed you to get into the gym and he says, baby, I'm not going to remove the weight. I'm going to keep them there so you can learn how to lift them. Because there's somebody here in this season. 2020 was heavy, but 2021, you're stronger. 2020 had the pandemic, but for 2021, you can lift more than 15 pounds. Now you can lift 30 pounds because God made you stronger. God made you wiser. Is there somebody here that's thankful for the weight? So whenever the enemy tries to put weight in your life, all you got to do is take it to the gym. And when you take it to the gym, you start to work out and say, you know what? I'm going to lift this up to you. And I know that you're going to answer my prayer. I'm going to lift this weight up to you. And once you take it, you're going to fight my battles and I'm going to hold my peace. I'm going to lift this weight up to you because you can carry what I can't carry. I'm going to lift this weight up to you because you've never lost a battle. Is there somebody here that comes on this Sunday morning and you've got weight in your life? But God said, I don't always remove it. I just teach you how to lift. Is there somebody that's willing to lift weights? I dare you to give God praise right now. I dare you to give him glory right now. Because we understand that there were some things in your life that he will not remove, but it's going to bless you when you lift it. Mm. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 So welcome to the gym. This is the place that we've got to work out. And one thing that you've got to have in your home, gym. Is a prayer room. Because you cannot. Get in healthy. Spiritual shape. Without prayer. You cannot. Get strong the way you need to get strong. Without prayer. Prayer is what gives you strength. Prayer is what gives you muscle. Prayer is what gives you stamina. And I'm not just talking about. Praying when you've got a problem. I'm talking about prayer as a lifestyle. I'm not talking about just. Praying when you need him and you got a crisis situation, but pray just because God is good. And I believe that God is going to move in this time and in this season and he is going to get us stronger. But the best way that he's going to get us stronger is in our prayer life. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. So listen, we look at this text because I want you to see this. There is a word from God. Oh, I saw somebody just getting free from their weight right now. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. There is a word from God about prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Do you see it? It's right there. Hallelujah. Prayer is defined in the Bible dictionary simply, watch this, as a dialogue between God and people, especially his covenant partners. This is important. It didn't say prayer was something that happens when you just make your request known to God. It says prayer is a dialogue. Somebody say amen. Amen. But watch this. There is some keys that I believe God wants to speak into his people. Because this is not the season where God just wants to teach us how to pray. Mm -hmm. This is the season where God wants to raise up warriors. Amen. This ain't just the season that we understand and have a knowledge of what it takes to pray. But this is the season where people are going to commit their hearts and minds to pray and war in the spirit. Yes. So demons will have to flee yes. and strongholds will be yes. torn down. He's not just raising up two or three people that we go to and ask for prayer. He's equipping all of his saints to be able to pray without ceasing and to go to the next level in God. And somebody say amen. amen. Watch this. But here is the key. Because there are warriors you're waiting there and you've been tormented by the enemy. And God is about to give you victory like never before. But he's going to teach you how to be a prayer warrior. And there are some things in this text that I believe that God is going to speak into your life and give you the keys that you need. Are you ready? Amen. Watch this. Point number one of walking in a healthy prayer life and being a prayer warrior 
is simply this. Your prayer life requires confident surrender. Mm. Whoa, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm going to read that again. <laughs> Your prayer life requires confident surrender. Mm. What is confident surrender? See, verse 9 in chapter 6, and we're in the Gospel of Matthew. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. This is one of the most powerful teachings of Jesus. Where he comes and tells the people he does not come to abolish the law. He comes to fulfill the law. And this is the teaching that bridges Old Testament teaching and prophecy to New Testament fulfillment. And we see so many things uh, about uh, what does it mean to be blessed with the Beatitudes. We see teaching how to pray. We see uh, judge not lest you be judged. It speaks to following uh, the, the word in, in our heart and not just with actions. And there's so many things that he talks about. But there's something in chapter 6 that speaks on prayer that he's going to teach us. And it speaks to confident surrender. Verse 9 says, pray then like this. If it says, pray then like this, he's about to show us the right way. But before he shows us the right way, he also teaches us the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Watch this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. It says, and when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Stay with me. Do not be like them. For your father, watch this, knows what you need. Yes. Before you ask him. Yes. Somebody say confident surrender. Uh -huh. I can be confident because the Bible says I don't have to babble on and use empty words. Because watch this. The Bible says your father knows what you need before you ask him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the enemy wants us to believe that we're on an island by ourselves when we're going through and God can't hear us. Yeah. But truth be told, once we approach him, he already knows what we went through yeah. even while we're going through it yeah. and even before we went through it. So, so here's what you've got to understand with this. He already knows what we need and the Bible says he shall supply all of our needs yeah. according to his riches and glory. So when we go to the throne of grace, we must go with confidence. Amen. Amen. The reason why many prayers go unanswered is not because you didn't pray, mm -hmm. but because you didn't pray with confidence. Mm. That's so good. Are y'all hearing me? That's good. See, this is important. It's not enough just to open your mouth. Mm -hmm. You've got to open your faith. Yes. It's not enough just to say the words. But you got to know it in your heart because God doesn't move on your words. He moves on your faith. Yes. God doesn't move on what you say. He moves on what you believe. Yes. Are you seeing this? That's why it said in James chapter 5 verse 16, the prayer of faith mm -hmm. will save the sick and God will raise him up. Uh, the fervent prayer of the righteous avail as much. It's not just the prayer, but it's the prayer of faith. Jesus says, if you ask and you believe in your heart that you have received it, you will always have it. So I don't know about you. When I go to the throne of grace, I've got confidence. Because even before I saw the storm, God already had a plan to get me out of the storm. I walk with confidence because I understand even when I can't get the words out, God already knows what I need even before I ask. I walk with confidence because God sees and knows and hears and he's already moving on your situation even when you don't even realize it because that's the kind of God that you serve. So knowing that God understands and he knows what we need, it should move us to confidence, surrender. Are you seeing this? So I got confidence, watch this, because God shall supply all of my needs and he already knows what I need. But watch this. I also have surrender. Why? Because God knows what I need. Mm. Wait, 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 wait. Did y'all hear what I said? Tell me, don't, don't, don't trip up on this. I'm confident because God knows what I need. Yes. But I'm also surrendered 
Because God knows what I need. What, what, what do you mean? I'm confident because he knows. But watch this. I'm surrendered. Get this. Because if God knows what I need, what the prayer warrior does, instead of telling God what you need, you should ask God what you need. <laughs> oh, so many times we come before God telling him what we want. But do we ever stop to ask him what we really need? Because how many know the thing that you're asking for might not be the thing that you need? All right. So with prayer, watch this. It takes a confidence that we know God has worked it out. But also, if he knows my needs better than I do, I better ask him so I'm praying according to what he wants instead of what I want. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody here. Is there somebody here that understands that it's not just a boldness and a confidence, but when you go to God, there is a surrender because I don't know about you. I'm tired of being selfish in my prayers. I'm tired of just asking what pleases my flesh. There comes a time if God knows what I need before I ask, sometimes, watch this, God allows us to go through some things because it has a way of birthing something that we need. Yes. Ooh. Could it be that you're in your wilderness situation because God is looking to birth something of what you need out of a droplet? Mm. Could it be that you're going through a turbulent storm because you asked God to take you to the next level and God answered your prayer by giving you what you need? A way to depend on God. Yes. Storm that you can cry out for help and not lean to your own understanding. Wow. See, sometimes, sometimes the way God answers our prayer is not what we expect, but he always knows what we need. Mm -hmm. So I have confidence and I have a surrender. So even if my, my situation is unfavorable, I'm still thanking him in advance. Because God can take a bad burden and birth a blessing and an answer to our prayer with something that we need and we don't even know it. Yes. Ooh, that's why I need some prayer warriors to stop right now in the gym and give God praise. Because this is the time that you just thank God for every single thing that you've been through. I need somebody to just give God praise Hallelujah. for every storm, every turbulent thing, every valley situation, yes, every wilderness situation, every attack of the enemy. I need you to thank God because you walk in surrender. God allows you to go some things to accomplish his will because he knows what you need. Yes. Oh, that's why in 2021, there's going to be some battle-tested people of God that's going to rise up out of their circumstances. We got a pandemic, so what? We got a mighty God. Oh, we got wars and rumors of war, so what? We got an awesome God that's keeping us on every side. If devil, if you didn't kill me in 2020, you better watch out because I'm coming because I learned some stuff. I got hurt in 2020. Oh, I lost some stuff, but I'm coming back better because who knew that I got more confident because in the midst of my trial, God gave me something I didn't even know I needed. But when it's time for me to walk in a greater anointing, I've got my prayer life. When it's time for me to go to the next level, I know how to fast. When it's time for me to go through spiritual warfare, I know how to call in the name of Jesus. Because every now and then, I can walk in confidence because I know he already knows what I need. But I can also walk in surrender because if he's allowed me to go through it, he's going to take me higher in spite of it. If he's allowed me to go through it, he's going to get the glory in spite of it. I need somebody to give God praise because he already knows what you need. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You better get your workout on. Yeah. You better go ahead and get your workout clothes on and get ready because God is birthing some stamina out of you. He's birthing some strength out of you. He's birthing some joy out of you. And you might as well walk in. Come on. Yes. Woo. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, let me preach this. So watch this. Your prayer life requires confident surrender. Confident surrender. 
means I understand that God has got to take your care of. And surrender comes when I don't need to get in God's way because he's already working it out. Amen. Woo! Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, watch this, watch this, watch this. Amen. Point number two, and we're still in this text. Hallelujah. It's right here. The Bible says, pray then like this. I feel the anointing. Verse 9. Our Father mm -hmm, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Point number two is right there in the text. You can't have authentic prayer without authentic worship. Mm, so good. You can't have authentic prayer without authentic worship. Watch what Jesus says here in the text. He's saying, be mindful. Don't just babble on like the hypocrites because they just want people to see the weight of their words. But when you really want to know how to pray, before you pray, you got to worship. Amen. It's right there in the text. Did you miss it? Watch what it says. Oh, this first part going to make me shout and run up out the gym. It says, our father. Okay, y'all missed that. I'm going to go ahead and shout. I'm shouting myself. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going to go ahead and shout. It says, our father. Why? What's, what's, what's so good about that? Here's what you've got to understand. Sometimes when you can't see your way, you can get on your face and realize how much of a privilege it is yes. to call God yes. your father. Yes. Hey God, I'm going to shout all by myself because I know I felt like the prodigal son and sometimes in my life, but isn't it a blessing that we are at the privilege and the honor of calling the almighty God our father. Oh, this means that we are in covenant relationship and we can call him our father. If you can't think of anything else to praise for how your week went, you can praise God because you can call him your father. That means if he's your father, he's your way maker. Yes. That means if he's your father, he's your Lord. Yes. That means if he's your father, he's in control. That means if he's your father, that means he has it under control. Chris Tomlin said, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. And we've got to get to a place where we understand you can't have authentic prayer without authentic worship. Amen. Watch what he says. He says not only... Are you our father? Which means I've been redeemed. Because I can be called a son. It says not only can I call him a father. That means I've been set free. Because now I'm in the kingdom. And now I'm one of his children. But it also says hallowed be your name. Ooh. Before you call on the name of your problem. You can call on the name of your God. <laughs> and he says, your name is hallowed, which means uh, uh, purified. It means holy is your name. See, and this is what we've got to understand. See, you will go in and lose yourself in God when you begin to call him by name. You ain't even started to pray yet. You didn't lift up COVID-19 yet. You didn't lift up your financial situation yet. You just called him by name. And it'll make you worship when you begin to call him by name because he has a whole lot of different names. And I'm not quite sure which name you call him. Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh because he was the provider for him. Moses called him a Jehovah Nisi because God was his banner and he got victory no matter what took place. God was called in Leviticus Jehovah M. Kadesh, which means the God who sanctifies. God was called Jehovah Shalom because he is your peace. God is also called Jehovah Rapha because we know that he is a healer. God was called omnipotent because he has all power in his hands. God is called omniscient because he knows everything even before the foundation of the world. God was called omnipresent because he's everywhere at one time moving on your behalf, setting somebody free over here, having his way over there. Somebody called him El Shaddai because he's God Almighty. I'm not quite sure what you call him. Some called him Adonai because he was your master. I don't know what you call him, but his name is God all by himself. He is Jehovah. I am that I am. And when you begin to call on his name, you have no choice but begin to worship. Because when you needed a way out, he was your way out. When you needed to be set free, he set you free. Because if you just call on his name, you'll worship him and say, I just love you. Because your name is holy. Your name is righteous. 
Your name is excellent. Your name is wonderful. Your name is counselor. Is there somebody here before you get into prayer? You got to say, wait a minute. You're too good for me not to worship you. You're too awesome for me not to just tell you thank you. You're too wonderful for me to not just pass in your presence. Because the Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Is there a worshiper in 2021? In the midst of your problems, you realize how good God was. And you just you just communed with him. And you bask in his presence. And you called him righteous because his name is holy. Somebody give God praise if you just were going to stop and call on his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too many people talk to God, but don't worship God. Mm. Too many people cry out to God, but don't praise God. Are you seeing this? And we've got to get to a place where our authentic prayer has to have authentic worship. You know why? What if I told you that your prayer life is not about you? Mm. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I thought we're supposed to call on God. He's supposed to do what I tell him to do. because Prayer Jesus. was never about you. Mm. Ah, you're going to miss your time in the gym. And you're going to mishandle weights. And you're going to do things for nothing. If you think that your prayer life was about you, mm. your prayer life, my brothers and sisters, is about God and his purposes and his plan for your life. Did y'all hear what I said? Oh, God. See, a warrior in the kingdom is a worshiper. Mm, so good. Are you saying this? You really can't be a warrior without being a worshiper because your strength is not from your fighting. Your strength comes from your worshiping. Mm. <laughs> what? Your strength is not battling the devil. Your strength is getting on your face and bowing in surrender to God. Hallelujah. Your strength is not giving somebody a piece of your mind or walking in your gift. Your strength is yielding yourself to the anointing of the Holy mm. Ghost. And that's what happens because the more you worship, the more you can be a warrior. Yes, amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Uh, let's go a little deeper, y'all. Can we do it? Uh, point number one, I hope y'all are being blessed by this. Are y'all being blessed by this? Amen. Watch amen. this. Your prayer life requires confident surrender. <laughs> yes, watch this. Point number two, you can't have authentic prayer, watch this, without authentic worship. He says, how Father in heaven, holy is your name. Hallowed be your name. Watch this. Verse 10, very important. It says, your kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Your will be done. Mm -hmm. On earth, I love it, as it is in heaven. Watch this. Effective prayer must have God's will and word as top priority. Mm. Are y'all saying this? Effective prayer must have God's will and word as top priority. Here's why. This is important because sometimes we miss God, not because we pray, but we don't pray the right thing. Hmm. And here is what the right thing is for us to pray. Jesus gives us a model and he says, your kingdom Come. What does it mean? He says, your kingdom come. This speaks to God's rule over man on this earth. Amen. Amen? So we're believing God for his rule and his dominion over his people. This is what he says, for your kingdom come. Watch this. Then it says, your will be done. Where is God's will? God's will is located in God's word. Mm -hmm. And here's what's very important. If you don't pray according to the will of God, you will miss God because there'll be a tug of war between his will and yours. Are you with me? This is important 
Effective prayer must have God's will and word as top priority. So, that's why, watch this, there is a major warfare that the enemy sets up when it comes time for you to study the word. Have you noticed it? Uh, whenever it's time for you to study the word, the enemy brings heavy warfare because the enemy would hate to have his people know the word. Yeah. Why is that? Because if the people of God knew the word, then the enemy couldn't lie to him no more. Mm. Oh my, 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 my. See, there are many people who are stressed out and they're going to God and God is telling you, you stressed out about something I already promised. Mm. You are losing your mind over something that I've already ordained in my word. You are losing sleep over something that I said I was going to work out. But if you don't know the word, the enemy has an ability to lie to you and you might believe it. And this is why the Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Can I teach this? And here's what happens. Something begins to shift. When you take the word of God and you align it with your prayers, there is nothing that will be impossible for you. There is no door that will not will be slammed in your face. When you take the word and say your word says all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Your word says no weapon that formed against me shall be able to prosper. When you're able to stand on the word, yes. it has a way of coming into your prayers. So I'm not praying according to my flesh. I'm praying according to the word. Yes. I'm not praying according to my emotions. I'm praying according to the word. I'm not praying and what grandmama said. I'm praying according to what the word says. And if the word says it, I'm going to stand on it. And you get to a place where it doesn't matter what your situation looks like. Because once you're in the word, your promise will always outweigh your problem. Woo! Did y'all hear what I said? Your promise will always outweigh your problem. Because there are two types of Christians, unfortunately. There are some type of Christians that they are so engulfed in their problem, they can't see past it. But then there's another kind of Christian that's so engulfed with God's promises, they can't see past it. <laughs> because if you're someone that can't see past your problem, you will panic until the problem goes away. But if you can't see past the pro promise, then it doesn't matter how big the problem is because the promise is always bigger. If you can't see past the problem, you will lose sleep at night worrying about how it's going to get done. But if you can't see past the promise, you say, I don't know when it's going to get done. I don't know how it's going to get done. But I know God already did it, yes. and I'm going to give him glory, yes. and I'm going to give him praise. Can you see your problem, or can you see God's promise? Because whatever you see is how you're going to pray. That's right. That's so, good. so here... Is my prayer for you. Lord, shift our vantage point. Lord, shift our perspective. Is somebody getting this here? This is for the prayer warrior. The prayer warrior doesn't need to have the problem shifted. They need to have their perspective shifted. Yes. They don't need to have the boulder shifted. They need to have their vantage point shifted. Because you've got to get to the place where you can see Jesus more than you can see your stuff. You've got to get to a place where you can see the king of kings more than you can see the warfare. Because whatever you see in front of you should be the thing that you speak to in the name of Jesus. So now if we are undefeated and we don't lose, we're going to stand on the word. And we're going to make sure that his will and his word. A top priority. Somebody say amen. amen. This is why when you work out, you got to have a prayer room, but you also got to have a study room. Mm -hmm. Because if you pray and you don't study, then yep, you will have a relationship with God, but you won't understand the fullness of how he's got you covered. Mm -hmm. If you study, but don't pray, You'll have the knowledge of God, but we won't have the move of God. Mm. Are y'all getting this? 
So when you are working out and lifting your weights, you're going to have to pray and you're going to have to study. Because the Bible says study to show yourselves approved. A workman need not be ashamed, mm -hmm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Are you saying this? Let's go deeper, y'all. Let's go deeper. We're just teaching here. Amen? Uh-oh. Point number one is right there. Your prayer life requires confident surrender. Point number two, you can't have authentic prayer without authentic worship. Point number three, effective prayer must have God's will and word as top priority. Point number four, uh-oh, it's right here in the text. Do you see it? Verse 11 says this, give us this day mm -hmm. our daily bread. <laughs> it said, give us, we're speaking to God, we're talking to God, give us this day, somebody say this day, this our day. daily bread. Point number four, your destiny is connected to your diet. Mm. Your destiny is connected to your diet. Watch what it said in the text. It said, give us this day our daily bread. The thing that we're asking for in the text is not for somebody else's bread, but for God's bread. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the reason why we go in lack is not because we're not eating, but we're just not eating God's bread. Mm. Uh. See, many people are in lack, and it's not because you don't have provision, but you're eating the wrong thing. Mm. So good. Oh, Mike, can I, can I help somebody here? See, some of y'all know, watch this, if you try to lose weight, praise the Lord, everybody, <laughs> you can go to the gym and get on a bike, you can run around, you can get all, you can do all you can. Woo! What a great workout. But if you come home and be like, oh, oh man, that was so good of a workout. Let me go ahead and get my, ooh, thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and something's going to happen because these kinds of things will mess up your progress. Mm -hmm. Are y'all seeing this? And your progress will get hindered because the progress that you made in your workout, you'll lose in your diet. Uh, uh, am, am, am I helping somebody here? So here's what you got to understand. You can't have a fruit and vegetable expectation with a junk food diet. Ooh, Jesus. And there's many people that they're looking for the benefits of working out but don't want to put in the work. Oh, mm, mm. uh, so if you can't say amen, say ouch. And when nobody's entitled to it, that's just like saying, uh oh, somebody help me. You about to get your summer body, amen? <laughs> but then June roll around and you still well, you wondering what happened to your summer body and your summer body ain't never happened because you didn't go to the gym even though you had access to it. Are you seeing this? And God is saying with your spiritual workout, for you to get healthier and strong, it requires you to change your appetite. Mm. So good. Why? Because if I eat spiritual junk food, it's going to taste great, but I'm going to end up feeling bad. Mm. If I eat spiritual junk food, it's going to satisfy my flesh and my emotions, but it will not move me higher in the spirit. That's why when we says, give us this day our daily bread, it's one thing to pray that, but how do you pray that? If you don't have a heart for the bread. Mm. Ooh, are y'all here? It's very important when we say, give us this day our daily bread. It can't just be about, Lord, give it to us. But your prayer also needs to be, Lord, give me a heart for your daily bread. Yes. Hallelujah. Because many times, God has offered us things to eat. But we didn't accept it because we didn't have a taste for it. Mm. See, we got to be mindful because sometimes the thing that's keeping us stagnant is not the devil, it's our diet. Ooh. The thing that's keeping us stagnant is not just what we see, it's what 
we eat. And we've got to get to a place that when we go higher in God as a warrior, we watch our appetite. Yes. We watch what we take in. We watch what we listen to. We watch who we let have in our ear. Yes. We watch what we hang around. We watch where, 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 where we're going to be because we understand that the daily bread is something important that we must have a heart for because when we have a heart for it, we'll ask God for it and we'll say, feed us till we want no more. Yes. Are you seeing this? So my prayer, watch this. Here's what you got to understand with temptation. Temptation, the devil never wants to tempt you so you can do something wrong. That's not what he's trying to do. He's not just making you slip up and fall. He's not making you just satisfy your flesh. The devil sends a temptation for the pure motive of turning your heart away from God. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing this? The devil, watch this. The only thing he's trying to do is to turn your heart away from the things of God. That's why he tempts you with something that you may like, not to change your habits, but to change your heart. So when God has his provisions for you, we'll miss it because we want something else to provide for us. But can I tell you? That there is a joy that I have that the world does not have the ability to give. And the world does not have the ability to take away. There is a joy and a peace that I have that there is nothing in the world that can provide to me. There is a peace and a sense of belonging that I have that can only come from Jesus Christ. So when we begin to commit ourselves to the provisions of God, we find out that we go without and we'll never have to lack again. Yes. Even when we don't have the bank account straight, we don't have to lack because we've got God's provision for the day. Yes. And God says, if you're faithful over a few things, yes. I'll make your ruler over many. Yes. And I need somebody that will say, Lord, change my heart that I'll receive your word. Change my heart so that I can receive what you want. Change my heart so I don't have an appetite for the things of the flesh. Yes. I don't have an appetite for the things that's going to have me bound. I don't have an appetite for the things that's going to keep me stagnant. I don't have an appetite for that because I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I declare my old diet is dead in Jesus' name. My old way of thinking is dead in Jesus' name because God has made it. So, he says, give us this day our daily bread. And when you begin to eat what God gives you, how many know it's more than enough? When you begin to take in what God has supplied for you, it's more than enough because God knows exactly what you need. And when you do it, you'll say, taste and see the Lord is good. Yes. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. If you're believing and you're knowing that God is awesome and God is faithful, it's time for you to change your diet. Yes. Because I don't know about you, but I want to have a diet that pleases God. Amen. I want to have an appetite that now I have a heart for the things of God. I can't help but study his word. I can't help but get in his presence. I can't help but listen to the things that edify and glorify God. Mm -hmm. Because my diet has changed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Watch this. He says, and forgive us our debts. Mm -hmm. As we also have forgiven our debtors. Verse 12. And then verse 14 it says, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Uh-oh. Watch this. Point number five when we're going home. Let your forgiveness from God deliver you from unforgiveness of man. Mm. Let your forgiveness from God deliver you from unforgiveness of man. I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody here that I'm listening to that is listening to this broadcast that's holding a grudge. Mm. And somebody did you wrong. They did. They did. They were dead wrong. I don't know what it was, but they, 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 they it, whatever it was, they did you wrong. And you have a right to be upset because it was hurtful. Mm -hmm. They walked out on your life 
it was hurtful. They stole from you, whether it was financially or whether it was emotionally. Mm. There's somebody here that comes in holding a grudge. Yep, they did you wrong. He promised he was going to show up, and he never did. Mm. She was supposed to be in a place of having your back, but she didn't. She stabbed you in your back. Mm. And you have a grudge, and you're holding on to it. And if you are in that place, I want to encourage you with something. So many people who have done us wrong, we serve a God who we've done wrong. Mm. Oh, my goodness. So mm. Oh, yeah, I know they owe you money and never paid you back. Yeah, but we turned our back against God and didn't deserve any kind of redemption. Mm. But God didn't hold it against us. Who am I talking to? There's somebody I'm talking to right now that you're holding the grudge of unforgiveness. Y'all haven't spoken in 10 years. Yep, you're waiting for them to call you and apologize. But can I tell you, the next time you ask God for grace mm. is the next time you need to reevaluate your grudge. Jesus. The next time you ask God to forgive you, even of something that you already did 10 times before, is the next time you should reevaluate that beef that you got with your family member. Because the last time I checked, there was a man named Jesus that carried a cross that was beat on, that was spit on, that was bruised, but he ended up getting on that cross and having nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And he ended up dying for all of those things that we did was nailed to the cross on that day to the point if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart God raised him from the dead that we will be saved. We will be forgiven. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So listen. If God is giving you grace, why do you still have the grudge? Mm. If God has forgiven you 70 times, 7 times, mm. why are you still holding what you're holding? Because it's time in 2021 where your prayer life cannot afford to be hindered. Mm. So good. In this time, your prayer life can no longer afford to be hijacked. Your prayer life can no longer afford to be sabotaged. Because now you realize the grace that you wake up with. Yes. See, the Bible says, and the hymn writer said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. And he was quoting Lamentations. And he says, uh, your, uh, your mercies, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And the more you realize how much mercy you have when you wake up, is the more you realize that you can let something go that somebody did to you. The more you realize how God gave you more than enough grace. You messed up five years ago, but he didn't hold it against you. He picked you back up and gave you a third and fourth and fifth chance. Yes. It's the same way you can forgive somebody and let God handle it. Yes. This is the time that you're going to be free. A prayer warrior can't be bogged down by unforgiveness. A prayer warrior can't be set apart and, and sabotaged on the side Line because he can't let something go. The prayer warrior knows that he commits faults and he has things, but he's forgiven. He's not perfect, but he's forgiven. And he realizes that it's a blessing to be forgiven, yes. so it's a blessing to forgive. Yes. Yes. And I want to speak to somebody today. And God is saying, your prayer life is going to be blocked mm. if you continue to carry that thing. That you shouldn't even carry. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And God is getting his people to a place that if you're going to be a prayer warrior, you got to be able to let it go. Because God loves you enough to let it go. Amen. Are you seeing this? And he says, verse 14, for if you forgive others their trespasses, amen. your heavenly father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. My brother, my sister, hallelujah, God loves you so much. Yes. He loves you so much. And he's teaching you how to pray. But he's letting you know that your prayer requires action. Mm. It's not enough just to pray. But we've got to pray and we've got to worship. It's not enough to just pray. We've got to pray and we've got to study. It's not enough to pray. We've got to pray and we've got to forgive. Mm. Because I would hate for you to believe God for a clean slate for you. But you don't have a clean slate for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and this is the moment and this is the season where I believe the body of Christ is going to walk in an unprecedented freedom Amen. like never before. And that freedom is simply going to become when you begin to let stuff go. When you begin to let the grudge go and turn it into grace. Because when you turn the grudge into grace, you understand that even though they did you wrong, you can still pray for them. Amen. That even though they let you down, you can still release it to God so you can be free. You can even know that even if it didn't work out the way you wanted it to work out, you can still move forward because God's still in control. Watch this. You are a prayer warrior, but you can't be the prayer warrior that God calls you to be unless you work out. And this is the time that God is calling his people to work out. Amen. He's calling you to walk it out, but he's also calling you to work it out. Hallelujah. God is going to move and he's going to be God all by himself. But there's a responsibility of God and there's a responsibility of you. Mm -hmm. And God is going to fulfill his word. But we have our responsibility and our part to play. Amen. That we get up and it's not enough to have access to the gym. But we've got to pick up a weight and start lifting it. Mm. It's not enough to have access at the gym. We got to pick up and get on the machines and start running for Jesus. And we're believing that God is going to do a new thing. I want to pray for you right now because there is somebody here that I'm believing that God is going to get you in shape because you have a kingdom purpose and you have a kingdom destiny that the devil can't stop you. There is nothing that he can do to keep you from what God is taking you, but it requires you to get in shape. And I believe that there are going to be some people who are going to walk into a healthiness that you've never walked in before. There's going to be some people that you're walking into a wholeness that you've never experienced before yes. because you've made a choice and made a decision that you're going to pray. And it's not going to be an occurrence, but it's going to be a lifestyle. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. There's somebody that's going to be called to the lifestyle of prayer and they're going to realize, man, it's amazing how much my marriage is going to the yes. next level since I made prayer a lifestyle. It is amazing how my finances are getting in order yes. now that I've made prayer a lifestyle. It is amazing how much joy and peace that I have and clarity when I made prayer a lifestyle. It's amazing how much I can hear the voice of God since I've made prayer a lifestyle. I want to pray for you right now. And I'm believing that God is raising you up and he's calling you to the gym and you're going to answer the call. Amen. But I want to open up an invitation before I pray for you. If there's somebody here that wants to give your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time, this is the moment that God is calling you. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Maybe you say, I got so many issues I got to work through. I can't do it. Remember what the Bible says? He already knows what you need even before you ask. Yes. And one thing that he knows that all of us need is a relationship through Jesus Christ. Amen. And we can't get to where we are going without relationship. We can't get to where we're going without seeking God with everything. So I want to call on somebody right now. You've been watching. You've been hearing about prayer. But if you confess your mouth with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible promises you shall be saved. Is there somebody here that wants to make a decision to give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ? Ooh, God didn't reveal himself to you. He didn't bring you this far just to leave you where you are. The fact that you're in this position to hear the word of God is a confirmation of how much God loves you. Yes. And he has an amazing plan for your life. Hallelujah. He's drawing you closer to him 
like never never before. But all you've got to say is yes. Because when you say yes to God, he'll come into your heart like never before. You'll experience a peace and a joy like never before. Hallelujah. And we do not know. Listen to me. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. We don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man comes. We don't know when our last breath is going to come. But right now, we have right now. Right now, all we have is right now. And God wants to use this right now moment to give you an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. All you've got to do is say yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you're here and you want to receive Christ, you can just say yes. Type it on the screen. You can inbox us and we'll be blessed to receive you. If you need to rededicate your life, this is your moment. This is your time to rededicate your life. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay where you are. Maybe you've got to a place where your prayer life is stagnant or you, know, you, you feel distance from God. The blessing is, is that God never left you. God never left your side. He'll never leave you or forsake you. No matter if you made a left turn or a right turn, God is with you. He's just saying, my son, my daughter, come back home. All you've got to do is come back home. If you want to rededicate your life, you can just say, yes, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. I want to get, get my prayer life better. I need to begin again. <clears throat> God says there's now no condemnation with them that are in Christ Jesus. And this is your time that you can begin again. And if you're here and you want to join Freedom Movement Church, the church is alive and well. And we are blessed to have uh, to be happy to receive you with open arms because you are a blessing to the body of Christ. So if you wish to join Freedom Movement Church, all you've got to do is say, yes, Pastor, I want to join Freedom Movement Church. I want to be a part of this body of believers. And we'll be blessed to have you. And we will walk together, iron sharpening iron, being the hands and feet of Jesus. So listen, I want to pray for you. If you need to make any of these three decisions, let's pray right now. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. Lord, I ask that you would speak to my brother and my sister watching online. That you would touch their heart in their living room, in their car, wherever they are. That you would just open up their hearts and their minds to receive you like never before. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we ask that you would cover and keep them in your care in Jesus' name. Lord, that they would make a decision to say yes without a shadow of a doubt. And Lord, that you would bless them and grow them. And that you would move them higher in you like never before in Jesus' name. We honor you. We adore you. We thank you for transformation. We thank you for life change. We thank you, Lord God, for moving on our heart and our mind, Lord, like only you can. And we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. So we love you. We honor you. And we adore you. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we're blessed. It's time to give. It's offering time. It's blessing time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We're excited. God has been so faithful. He's been so good. Amen. This is the time that we would take this moment that we would sow into the kingdom of God. He's provided so much for us. He's given us homes and, and jobs and, and provisions and, and, and all that we've needed. This is the time that we pour back in and sow into the kingdom of God. Because God is worth it. He is that faithful. Yes. So this is the time that we can participate even in worship and honoring him in our giving. Hallelujah. We are a, a generous church. We give out of identity. It's who we are. Uh, but we are a tithing church. Somebody say amen. amen. We are faithful in our tithing according to what the word of God says in the book of Malachi. It says bring the whole tithe to the storehouse that there will be meat in God's house. He said, test me. He said, I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing you have not room enough to receive. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And, uh, and he says, he'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. And God is faithful. And I know there's somebody that knows what it's like mm -hmm. to take him at his word yeah, and yeah. to obey him in the area of tithing offering. And you see God just move just abundantly in your life. 
But we can give two ways. We can give by Cash App. It, the directions on the screen, dollar sign, Freedom Move. Hallelujah. And we can also give by PayPal, www.tinyurl.com forward slash Freedom Move. Hallelujah. And we're excited about what God is doing in this season. Uh, the Lord has us out on location, out on assignment, and we're moving. God has given us a heart uh, to pour into the community in this moment. And this is a time that we've got to stay faithful in our tithes and offerings. Amen. So whether we are broadcasting here or we go out of town, go out of state, we go bless somebody's life, uh, we have all that we need to do what God has called us to do. I'm so excited about this season because I'm excited about what God is doing in our ministry, but I'm excited about what God is calling you to do. Amen. And I'm believing that God is going to equip you and empower you to do all that God is calling you to do. Hallelujah. You don't have ministry on Sunday morning going to church anymore, but you do have ministry on your job. Amen. Amen. Yes, you, you don't have ministry like you did on Sunday, maybe serving in a ministry in the same capacity, but now you have your neighbors and you have your co-workers and you have your home and your kids and there's ministry work that God is calling you to do like never before. But I'm believing by faith that you're going to be in the best shape of your life. Amen. And God is Amen. going to use you. Right. And you're going to walk in a strength that you didn't even know you had. Mm. Ooh, did somebody hear what I said? Mm. You're going to walk in a strength you've never had because you've taken the time to work out. Mm. Hallelujah. We're going down from this place. Let's all pray together. Love y'all so much. Praying for you this week. We're going to continue in this series. We're going to be talking about spiritual disciplines. We're going to have a time of prayer and fasting. We're going to have a lot of wonderful things that's going to get the body of Christ equipped and prepared yes. to do God's work. Because God is coming for a healthy church. Amen. And he wants to use you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. Lord, we thank you, God, that you've blessed us, Lord God, with your promises, with your power. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with your presence and your relationship. And we ask that you would give us the heart and the mind to continue to put in the work that we will build our faith, that we will build our character, that we will build our prayer life, that we will build our knowledge of you, that you will give us a heart for the, for the things of God. Help us to study. Help us to meditate on your word. Help us to stand on your promises. Help us to pray for our neighbor. Help us, Lord God, to move in discipline, Lord God, as a lifestyle, that we will bear fruit in every aspect of our life in the name of Jesus. So we need you, and we ask that you would just keep us in your care like never before. We give you all the glory, and we give you all the praise, and we ask that you would just have your way in our life. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Love you so much, Freedom Movement Church. Thanks for coming to the gym. God bless you.